12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 there, and uh, it is good to have you here, and those who have been traveling, glad to have you back, and uh, I know summer is, the end of school year is quickly approaching, there'll probably be some more traveling up and coming, and, and uh, so how many of you have got plans to go somewhere this summer? Yeah, I know you do, and uh, so, and uh, so, uh, Miss Shaw, are you staying in the country, or are you leaving the country? Yeah, she didn't do that last year. I knew she couldn't do it again. She had to had to bail out on us, you know. <laughs> and she's, she likes to go everywhere in the world, literally. And uh, Miss Barbara, are you you have like four more trips in the next three months. Is that something? Is that pretty close? Two. And uh, so yeah, I knew she had a lot of things going as well. Uh, so you be in prayer for all these folks who are traveling. And then we're going to be headed back. Uh, we're kicking another one of our kids out of the nest, and uh, so uh, uh, sending Rebecca off to college here in August, September, August. August and uh, so uh, <laughs> and so you be in prayer for all that and then we'll be traveling back for that and I know others have traveling plans and so let's be in prayer uh, I don't mind you going but just make a deal with one another when we get back we come back in other words we don't take two weeks off recovering from our two weeks off right we just we get back we come back amen and uh, and uh, so uh, I'm not mad at you for taking vacations I'm glad you can uh, have the ability and the, the affordability to do that and if you have a privilege and opportunity to do that, then do that. And even if it's not away somewhere, uh, take a day trip. Take a couple of days trip. You know, we've got some beautiful places in our state. We've got some cool places in our state, you know. Like Arizona State has been pretty cool this year so far, right? And uh, so uh, but they've got some pretty nice places in our state where the climate's not as hot as it is here in the desert floor. And, and uh, there's, if you want to play in a creek, there, you can go up Slide Rock. If you want to, you know, what, there's still snow skiing, by the way, it, Snowball and Flagstaff. It's still open right now, literally. And uh, so it's kind of unusual this year. And uh, so and there's a lot of things you can do. And uh, so I, I appreciate the summer. I like the summer. And I like the fact that people can go. And I'm thankful we can come back together. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12 uh, this evening. Look what it says in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Uh, you know that ye were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, notice this, but the same Spirit. There are, there are differences in administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To, for to one is given... By the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, the word of knowledge, by the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. I'm going to say this real quickly. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that go on in our world, a whole lot of things that go on in the name of religion the name of Christ even. A lot of those things are so far-fetched and fleshly that we find no reference or foundation for them in the Bible. But there is, in the Bible, foundation and references to spiritual gifts. One of the things that gets most twisted and often spoken of and misspoken of, I should say, is the spiritual gifts aspects of things. Now, probably everyone in this room knows someone that has challenged you before on spiritual gifts. They may not have called it that, but they challenged you on something like, well, you, are, you don't have the Holy Ghost because you don't speak in tongues. Or you don't have the whatever because whatever. Or you, and they've challenged you in some way concerning your walk with the Lord and your growth in Christ. Notice what, what Paul writes here to the church at Corinth. And let me remind you, the church at Corinth had some misunderstandings and some misoperations when it comes to the Word of God. They were not doctrinally wrong, they were just practicing wrong. He doesn't deal with the doctrine of, of, of things very much in Corinthians. He deals with their practice of the doctrine. What happens, we can know the truth, we can have the truth, read the truth, and even say we believe the truth, but not practice the truth. Look at our country. How many of you understand our pledge, as long as every document that our founding fathers put together declares that we are a single nation, a one nation, a one people, 
yet look at our country how divided we are. Now, wait a minute. Our Constitution says this, but now people read the Constitution differently. They say the Constitution didn't mean that. Wait a minute. If, they, if, they, if it had been, now, if it'd been written nowadays and they would have said it differently, I don't think so. I'm going to tell you why. We know the Constitution is not like inspired Scripture, but I definitely do believe God had His hand on the men that, that assembled it and put it together and worded it. I definitely do believe because they sought the Lord in prayer and they sought to guide a nation that God honored their prayers and honored their wishes and they were able to put together a document that, that allows us and affords us to live as one nation with liberty and independence. Those two words sometimes don't even seem like they go together. Liberty to do what we would like to do independently, but yet united. Catch this real quickly. Our country was set up in, a, in the idea of being there that as long as we have a moral and a religious nation, the founding fathers, the document the founding fathers put together, would, we, would apply to govern a religious and moral nation. But since we've no longer adhered to scriptures, we moved away from morals and we've changed our mores of society and we've, we've moved away from being, and they use the word religious, but we've moved away from being Christ-like and seeking the Lord. Our documents no longer govern us the way they could or should because we're misinterpreting and reinterpreting and reinventing. I think all of us have been frustrated sometimes in the past and maybe you've been frustrated even this week. I'll be honest with you, I'm I'm thrilled about some of the things that our state legislator put together this session. I mean, honestly. Uh, some of it's maybe not come out yet and you haven't seen or heard of all of it. And you'll be hearing more of it if you, if you desire to. You can actually go to uh, the website and actually look at all the bills that's been proposed to the governor and the governor's going to do with. But I, they've made some amazing decisions. Let me remind you, our country, I mean, our state is not all going the same direction. The Senate is fighting the House, just like our country is fighting one another. But yet I think, even with that being said, that there's been some decisions made that our country and even our state has made in the past that helps us make decisions going forward, even if a party change takes place or we flip the coin, so to speak, as far as who's going who's to make the laws or govern our state. Right now, and I haven't heard in the last day or two, I've been busy, but, but I know the governor of, of, of uh, Georgia was getting her to sign a bill to, that would, they, I think they're calling it something like the heartbeat abortion bill, something like that, to where, what is it, is it, is it, is it uh, 16 days or something they can detect a heartbeat? Somebody remind me of these numbers, I don't remember. But as soon as they detect a heartbeat, abortion would be illegal. Now think about that. You say, wait a minute, they should be able to abort it all. I agree, but hey, moving the chain in the right direction is a win, <laughs> Right? Instead of going to the idea of the knucklehead there in Virginia trying to go to where they can even have a child and then have a week or two to think about it after the child is born if they even want to keep the kid. You know, I, I, let's move the chain the right direction for a while. You know, I'm thankful for that. And yet, right on the same exact uh, time we hear stories that we're excited about, we hear of another shooting there in Colorado. One killed and eight injured or something like that. And this time it was different because there was two shooters. Not a single gunman, but two that kind of teamed up and coerced. At least that's what I understood, unless they've changed the news. I haven't heard today at all. Unless they've changed the story. Can anybody confirm to me? Is that still? Yeah, that's what I thought. A boy and a girl. Uh, and uh, that had kind of teamed up to do this school shooting together. Three days before the end of the school year. The one that was killed was three days away from being graduated. Think about this real quickly. Our country, we may be making some decisions that are right. We may have some people, but our country as a whole needs the Lord as much or worse than we've ever needed the Lord. For us to think, well, it's getting good. It's getting great. It's wonderful. Listen, we've had some great people in our state that stood, that stood pro-life for a long time and, and moved the change in the right direction for a long time and, and set, a, set a mark and a standard. Center for Arizona Policy is one of those organizations that's fought a good fight when it comes to that. I mean, they, and they're still fighting a good fight, but every day and every week they're facing more opposition. Every day and every week. And we find out here in 1 Corinthians that Paul writes concerning spiritual gifts. He said, I, don't, I would not have you ignorant. He said, listen, don't, don't go on like you don't know. 
You've been told. You've been taught. The Word of God has, has, has showed us and, and it's, been per, it's been preserved for us and, ta- and written down. He said, listen, you know that you, are, you were Gentiles, carried away in these dumb idols, even as you were led. The word dumb meaning they can't talk. <laughs> we might use it a little more slang. We get the same message across, dumb idols, you know. But he's saying, listen, those idols couldn't teach you anything. Don't get carried away. The word carried away doesn't mean like, you know, we, there's, a, there's a, a Christian song, uh, an old Southern gospel song, that, uh, that I'm going to get carried away, carried away, you know, and the idea being there, literally, I'm going to be carried away, you know. And, and think about this. He says, don't get carried away when it comes to knowing what spiritual gifts are and how they should be applied. Don't listen to false teaching. These, these idols that you once worshipped when, when you were Gentiles and, and you, you were misled, listen, those idols, they couldn't teach you anything. They were dumb. They couldn't speak. So don't believe what you used to believe about some things. Don't believe what you've heard others say or what others believe. Hey, look at what he says in verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand. He says, I'm, let, me, let me share with you what the Lord has said about spiritual gifts. He said, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. He says, here's what it boils down to. You can't call him to be your Savior except the Holy Ghost leads you to do so. And you don't have the power to say he's nothing and he's, and he's accursed and say that that was God that told you to do so. These people nowadays that do these horrific things and they say, well, God made me do it. Listen, God did not make them do those horrific things. Not my God, not my Savior. Maybe a God of flesh or God of this world or a God of delusion or but confusion, but not, not my God. Not the King of kings, not the Lord of lords, not the Savior of all of mankind. Not the one that gave his life for all to be saved. No, 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 not my God. He didn't tell you to, to perform some mass murder or, or decapitate somebody that loved you. Or, no, 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 not my God. He says, that's not who, you can't say that, he says. In verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts. He says, let me go ahead and say it this way. I know that there's going to be different gifts that you have. But if it's a gift, if it's a spiritual gift from the Holy Spirit, from God himself, that's what he says here. He says, there may be diversities of gifts, but there's the same spirit. When I first moved to town here, I hadn't been here long, just a few months, I guess. And I got, a, I got a phone call from a pastor here in town, and he said, I understand that you're, that you're new in town and you just started a church. I said, yes, sir. We started a church over here on uh, Carousel Drive. We're meeting in a house right now. And he said, well, my name is, he, just, he said, could I buy you a cup of coffee? And I said, well, you know what? I said, I go to work really early in the morning, every morning. I said, I do construction. I said, I said but that'd be fine if you want to meet. He said, he said w- could we meet at 6 o'clock? And I said, yeah, that'd be fine. I said, I'll start a little later that morning. We, we met over here at the little cafe there to, at Alex's at 6 o'clock, and, and, and we had a little cup of coffee. And, we, and he introduced himself, and, and he simply said this to me. He said, so what kind of church are you? I said, we're a Baptist church. He said, Southern Baptist? Or, I said, no, we're independent Baptist. He said, okay. He said, I'm glad you're in town. This is exactly, I'm, I'm telling the exact conversation. He said, we've been praying that someone would move into town that we could work with. And he said, you know what, I, I believe we can work with the Baptist. And I said, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just listening, you know. I mean, I'm, you know. And he says, and we talked, and I said, well, I said, you know, I said, we'll just have to see what we're, we're at, you know, and stuff like that. I already knew what he told me. We could not partner. We couldn't yoke up. But it wasn't the time to go into that. He was just meet and greet. By the way, it wasn't Jack Grover that, that done that, all right? So go ahead and clarify that for some of his folks don't throw something at me. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we couldn't work together either. And, uh, but anyway, the, <laughs> but, but the, the point is this, seriously. The, the point is we got ready to leave there. I said, man, I got to go to work. We spent maybe 15, 20 minutes there, and I said, I got to go to work. I'm walking across the parking lot, and he hollered at me, and he says, hey. He said, uh, he said are you all going to be traditional or contemporary? And I said, old-fashioned. And he said, he laughed. He said, he said, yeah, he said, I, he said, yeah, we're, 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 we're on the contemporary side. He said, he said, uh, 
I don't know, if, you know and I said, well, and I just, I stopped. And I turned around and I walked back over to him. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, why did you choose contemporary? And he said to me, well, he said, we just, we just, we believe in a lively service. We just want to, we want to be happy when we come to church. We want to be excited about serving the Lord. And I said, okay. I said, I understand. I said, let me ask you a question. How many gods do you think there is? He said, one. I said, do you think God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit is just one God? He said, yes. I said, okay. I said, so what you're telling me is this. That the same Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, the same God, would lead us differently, and we're both going to be used the same way, doing different things to get the same results. And he kind of stumped for a minute. He didn't say anything. And I just kind of laughed. I said, listen, I'm just messing with you. I said, let me make a point, though. I said, I promise you, if you've been convinced that old-fashioned means dead, dried up, and boring, I said, let me remind you, the same Holy Spirit that saved me is, is the same Holy Spirit that led everybody that's ever been a child of God to receive Christ as our Savior. And, and I wasn't mad at the guy, and we never did get, we never did become any, we never did fight or feud. Matter of fact, uh, they went through some things, and in building a building, we went through some things. And matter of fact, on, a, on occasion, we'd bump into other post office, and, he, and he'd say, how's the building going? And I'd say, he'd say, let's pray. And he'd just stop right there in the middle of the post office and just pray with me right there in the post office. He was a nice guy. But there's no way we could partner with him. They didn't believe in eternal security. You say, well, it's just, so it's just a music thing for you. I didn't, did you hear me say that? I didn't say that. That is one part, but that's not it. They didn't believe in eternal security. They didn't believe, they, they placed way too much emphasis upon baptism, not enough on salvation. To them, baptism was part of salvation. Now, baptism is important, but it's obedience, it's not salvation. And there were some other things. And we were friendly, and we were, we were kind to one another and all that, but there's no way we could partner up. Imagine this real quickly. What if the God of, uh, the author of order and decency all of a sudden started spreading chaos? All, what, what if all of a sudden you showed up at your bank tomorrow uh, to make a deposit and they said, oh, we no longer take cash, we only take crackers? You have to go buy some crackers and bring me crackers. How much confidence would you have in your bank? You'd probably say, well, can I make a withdrawal? <laughs> like all of it right now? No, I, mean, you know, I mean, really, right? I'm going to find somewhere else, something. Would that, would that kind of cause some confusion in your mind? So for us to say that there's, that there's one God, as Paul says the church of Corinth here, but he'll lead us differently, that's absurd. Now, there are differences in gifts. Amen? How many of you understand, I am not an analytical-minded person. How many of you would understand that? Everybody do this. You know that, right? I, uh, to, to, to analyze and to, like, yeah, I'm going to need some help in that area. I'm just not that guy. All right? Now, just tell me what needs to be done, and I'll help you do it. I'm that guy. But you're going to help, have to help me figure out some of the logistics of it. You see what I mean, honestly? And, and, and what it is, so there's differences in gifts. Some folks, like, let's just pick some out that's come to our church recently. We talk, mentioned Brother Dave and Joy Corn. I can't do what they do. I love that couple. I've even been here with him so many times. We've set up and tore down, set up and tore down, set up and tore down so many. I know how the tricks are done, and I still can't do the tricks. I mean, seriously. How about Miss Margaret Stringer? I mean, hey, I, I don't know anybody that can do what she did, man or woman. You say, you don't, I, I didn't say nobody could. I said, I don't know anyone. I couldn't. I mean, I love the woods. But I don't know that I could have did what she done, done what she did. Get it right in a minute. I don't know that I could have spent 40 years. Wait a minute. And it's not the 40 years. But been used of the Lord the way she was used of the Lord. 
to do that. So here's what happens. Paul's addressing this, and he, say, he says, listen, there's diff- diversities of gifts, but one spirit. Verse 5, and there are diver- differences of administrations, but the same Lord. So therefore, there, there's, there's, all, there's differences in the way that God uses us. But there's only one Holy Spirit that leads us. And it's not the flesh, and it's not emotions, it's the Holy Spirit. And, there, and, there, and there's, there's differences, he says in, in verse 5, and there are differences in administrations, but the same Lord. So there may be differences in the way sometimes we perform these things. But it's not differences in the root. And in verse, verse 7, or verse 6, and there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. So it's God that works from the beginning to the ending. He works in the middle. I, I, last night, we was here at the church, and after the Bible study, Rick and... Sean and Eric and they came over to the office and we were talking and, I, and they left and Eric and I was leaving last night and, and in the parking lot I was, I was telling him, I said, man, I love the Bible. I love some of the stories of the Bible. And I simply said, I said, I said Marvel and what's the other company that the, 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 they're always rivaling? Somebody tell me the DC. Marvel DC can't even make up. They, they can't even put together what God did in real people's lives. I mean, sci-fi can't even catch up to, to real, you know? And, and, we get, and we get so hung up in the things of this world and, and entertainment. Wait a minute. Have you read some of the lives and how God, God, God did in the lives of some of these people? I mean, have you seen a movie that moved you in the way that Miss Margaret Stringer's life moved you? I mean, watch a biography of some made-up character. Watch a biography of some Hollywood, some millionaire, some billionaire, some whatever. Some, wait, does it move you in the same way? No, I don't think so. Not, it may move you, but it won't move you spiritually. It won't move the spiritual needle like that. God does through real people supernatural things. And we get hung up in the, in the cartoon and the, and the, and the superficial instead of the supernatural. You know? Notice what he says here real quickly, and I've got to do this quickly. He says in verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man the prophet. Verse 8, for one who is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge of the same Spirit, to another faith, by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, verse 11, but all these worketh, notice this, that one and the selfsame Spirit. Now we know we're talking about the time when, like when, this is the, the time when the church was just being sent out. And God had uniquely equipped some apostles and disciples. How many understand that? For a period of time, it wasn't, it wasn't from now, it wasn't from then until he comes back. It was for a period of time, God uniquely equipped to empower and birth the church to show one God. This is exactly what Paul's addressing here. He says, so, so in other words, is that person more important than that person? Absolutely not. Is that gift more to be bragged of than, than that gift? Absolutely not, because it wasn't the flesh that gave the gifts. I mean, really. This is going to sound like a silly illustration, but let's, just, let's go ahead and use it. Two years ago at Arizona City Days, not this past year because there wasn't one, but two years ago at Arizona City Days, uh, for fun, and he's a fundraiser for the, for the Chamber of Commerce, I entered one of my motorcycles in the car show because you could. 15 bucks, I thought I'll throw 15 bucks up there. And I won second place. I said, that's pretty good. This is going to sound silly to you. I, c- I could care less. You know why? I bought the motorcycle the way it is. I haven't changed one thing on it. I've not added one speck of paint. I've not, honestly. So for me to say, well, look what I, what did I do? So I got awarded something by someone for something that had nothing to do with me. Spiritual gifts. God uniquely equips us and it's not because of us. It's because he wants to use us. He does the work. He does the calling. He does the empowering. But he wants to use us. So there for us to say, well, I'm more important than you. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. 
We do nothing. All we do is, is make ourselves available and then make ourselves not only after availability, but we make ourselves now separated, consecrated. We desire to live ourselves, we desire to live our lives in a way that can be used of Him, and therefore it needs to be without spot or blemish. A, a testimony that is ruined is a testimony that cannot be used. I mean, he, he talks about this. I don't know who it was. Someone preached a message recently. I don't know if it's here or I heard it somewhere else, but, but, but about the, the bags with the holes. Was that Brother Cox preached that? Somebody preached that recently? That's kind of what we do with our life if we're not careful. God says, I want to use you. And we carry ourselves around with so much pride and arrogance and that, that it's, God can't use us. He says, I want to use you. I've given you the ability to do this. I've already equipped you to do it. But I can't use you. Because you're tarnished. Everything I put in you, you just cast your pearls before swine. Everything I give you to do, you, you do carelessly. You do it temporarily. You do it foolishly. Your testimony is tarnished, and therefore I, I cannot, you cannot be the, the reflection of my light. That's what we are to be, right? That's what John tells us there, right? I'm not that light. I'm just here to bear witness to that light. That's a reflective idea. You know the thing about tarnish, what it does? It takes the reflection away. That's what tarnishing will do. It takes the reflection away. And if our life gets tarnished with sin and habits that are, that are ungodly, it takes the reflection of God away from us. Well, I know Him as my Savior. Okay, I'm not saying you don't. I can't deny that. I can't see your heart. Only God can. But it takes the reflection of God away that anyone else can see. John says, I'm not the light. I'm just here to bear witness. I'm just here to, to reflect the light. <laughs> I'm just here to let him shine off of me. <laughs> and if our life is tarnished with sin, this is what Paul's addressing here. He says, verse 11, But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. We'll do this real quickly, but look at verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Now we understand that our body has fingers and arms and elbows and toes and right ears and nose and right and all those things make up our body and our body's gonna be a little bit different obviously gonna have an individual individual trait but he says listen just like we have different parts of our body everybody that's in the body of Christ makes up the body of Christ and yet there's only one Christ that's what he says here and I'm hurrying look at verse 20 now they are many members yet but one body Verse 21, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. <laughs> it, it's not this part of the body's privilege or right to say, I don't need this part of the body. And when it comes to the body of Christ, it's, it's the same way. It's not for me or for you to say, we'd be better off if you wasn't here. It's not for me to say, you are not as important as I am. It's not for you to say, you, that I'm not as important as you are. It's not the way it is. One of us can't say to the other part, I have no need of you. Look what it's 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, you see that? Upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts, I think we would all identify with that to some degree, right? And our uncomely parts have more abundant. Here's what happens to us. Verse 22, Nay, much more of those members of the body which seem, do you see that? Seem to be more feeble. We need, to, we need to remember that word is in there. I didn't add that. It doesn't say those members of the body which are more feeble. No, 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 no. Which seem to be more feeble. So what is it? I said, uh, I don't know how long ago it was. I, I just, it was on my heart. One Sunday morning as we was getting ready to close, and I don't want you, I don't want you folks here to, to, to think that I don't take note of this. I said, some of you spend more time getting ready and preparing to be here because of physical limitations. You work harder and longer to get to come to church than the time that you spend here. I do, I do not want you to notice I do not want you to feel that I don't take note of that. 
That's a big deal to me. That's a big deal. Because that means there's something in them driving them more than just a fellowship or a country club mentality. Because they can find that somewhere else. That's a whole lot closer home or a lot easier accessible, you know? So I don't want anyone to ever feel, no matter who you are, no matter what's your age, no matter what, whatever the world defines as, as limitations, and I've often said this, and, and I can be guilty of saying the same thing, but if I'm not careful, but we often uh, call folks, you know, uh, special needs folks. We're all special needs. We're just all different needs. Now, I understand that's a kind of way of saying, we used to use the word retarded when I was growing up, and I don't know that that was necessarily detrimental to anyone's mindset. It's just we've moved our culture to where it's called special needs now. But the reality is we're all just, we're all just different needs. Everyone just have different needs. I have needs. That's why God won't use me to do some things because he equips somebody else to do those things because I have needs in that area. You see what I mean? I'm not equipped in that way. We all have that. Every one of us does. So the Bible says this. And it's go, this all ties together, by the way. The, the, the gifts in the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit don't give gifts to the unsaved. Spiritual gifts. So these, these spiritual gifts, he says, listen, don't be, don't be ignorant. Don't listen to those dumb idols that can't speak and can't talk to you. Don't, don't listen to some story somebody told you they said. They, they can't even talk. And then he goes into the right of the body of Christ. And he says, listen, there's some that seem to be more feeble, he says, but they're not more feeble. He says, Verse 23, and those members of the body which we think. You see that? We think. Again, it's, it's just a perception thing. We think they're less honorable. We need to quit thinking that way. We need to quit thinking that way. I say to you, I'm, I'm going to... I'm always picking on the boys, so I'll pick on a girl tonight. How's that? Over here, that's a little girl I can pick on. She likes it when I pick on her. Come on. All right. Look here. I don't know, but she took pity on me when she showed up here and visited the first time. And she's been my friend. And she aggravates me, and I aggravate her, and we pick at one another. Hey, listen, for someone to say, they're just a, they're just a, they're just a kid. So we, we perceive that they don't have the power to influence like an adult does. What we think that they're less honorable because, I mean, come on. She's a little girl. The Bible says that's the wrong perception. We need to quit thinking that way. We need, to quit, we need to quit thinking that they're less honorable. We, 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 need to quit, we need to quit perceiving that they seem to be more feeble. <laughs> Notice what it says here in verse 24. For our comely parts have no need. In other words, here's what it is. You know the part of your life that you think is the best part of your life? When's the last time that you said, God, I want you to bless. This. I want you to, Lord, I want you to have pity and bless this, this part of my life, and it's the best part of your life. It's the part that you think you got it all together on, you know? You know? Really. I mean, this week you had money to pay your bills. This week your health was good. This week, you know, uh, everything was okay. And, and you said, God, uh, I, I really need help in the area of paying my bills. But they were all paid. See, what happens, we forget about that. You know what the Bible says about Christ when he came? He didn't come to those that, that need not a physician. You see that word, need not? It's about what we realize we need. I've had it said to me more than once. The first time it was ever said to me was on an airplane. I'm talking to the guy, a guy that was actually working in television. And he wasn't like an actor, actress. He was behind the scenes guy. He was a big deal, though. And I'm sitting on an airplane beside of him, and we're, talking on, we're, we're sitting there talking. I'm asking him if he goes to church, if he knows the Lord is his Savior. And he, and he literally said, the first time I've heard it other times since, but this is the first time I've heard it. And so I've never heard that before. He said, I've never had a need of God. He said, now my son, he's all into that stuff too. He said, he's a Methodist minister out in Texas. He said, but I, I've never had a need of God. Yes, he has. He just hasn't realized it. 
The Bible says when Christ came to the church, he didn't come to those that need not a physician. You see the word need there? You know why Tom's trying to make a doctor's appointment? Because a test result came back and said, you need to see a doctor. Because he realized he has a need of seeing a doctor, he's making a doctor's appointment. You know, until we realize that we're a savior, I mean, that we're a sinner and we need a savior, until we realize that we're going to hell, until we realize that we need Christ, we won't turn to him or seek him. This is what he says here. He says, well, we have a perception that even in the body of Christ that there's those that seem to be feeble. We think that there's some that's less honorable. But he says in verse 24, for our coming parts have no need, but, notice this, God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to that part, notice this, which lacked. The Bible says this, the last shall be first. What happens to us if we're not careful? We'll find ourselves saying, ah, you know, that, 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 that person, I mean, I know they're there all the time, but, you know, they just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hey, listen, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Faithfulness gets my vote. You, you be faithful to the things of God, the house of God, you've got my vote. You have my hand if you need it. You have my heart. Seriously. Say, but, 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 don't you ever get tired of? Not if they're faithful. Not if they're faithful. Do you? Let me ask a question. And, and this is a, I'll, I'll close with this. I have three children. Three. Girl, boy, girl. All of them getting older this month, next month, and the following. All right? As a result of that, do I love this one more than that one? Or those two more than this one? Or this one more than those two? Or No. But is, are they all different? Oh, yeah. Do some of them cause more headache? Oh, yeah. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. Boys are ways you're raising girls. My daughters will tell you that. <laughs> now, you may disagree, but I'm telling you, my wife will tell you, and she's raised them. She's, she is one, and she says, boys are way easier than girls. You know? I catch it so quickly. So we love Jacob more. No. No. Are there a diversity of gifts? Yes. Are there differences in the people? Absolutely. Are their personalities different? Are their talents different? Absolutely. Do the way they respond to things appear different? Absolutely. So does that mean that, uh, it's my kids calling again. Uh, Why well, they want this time? Uh, you can get there real easy. And you know what will help you get there? When they quit being faithful to what you taught them to be faithful to. Right? They start living rebellious, reprobate, wicked, sinful, vile lives. And every time they call, they need bail money. They need, you know, rent money, electric money. You know what happens? It's like, ugh, I'm not answering this time. But if regularly, they, it don't have to be every day, but regularly they call you and just say, I just want to call and say, hey, it don't have to be daily, weekly, it not have to be monthly. But there is a phone call that comes on a regular basis where they don't want anything, they just called. You know? And when you talk to them, you say, hey, how's things going? How's your life? How's your school? How's your whatever? And, and it's, oh, we're doing good. And are you going to church? Yeah, we're going to this church. And how's things going? And, and, and when their life is good and they're faithful, the things you've taught them, you know what happens? You'll answer the phone when they call, won't you? And you won't be angry that they called. You won't be upset that they called. Now catch this. When people say to me, don't you ever get of the whatever word you want to use. That, there's a whole variety of them that you can use and stick in that, in that blank, but uh, the drama, since that's one of the things, I don't think ministry really is drama, but the point is, uh, people 
are dramatic, but I don't think the ministry is. Right? But don't you ever get tired of, of your phone ringing at this time of night or that time of... N- no. As long as it's the faithful ones ringing the phone regularly. Now, I'll still answer to the unfaithful ones to a degree. But there are some people that I have in my phone book that call and I say, I'm not answering that one. Because they may have called me 50 times and 49 of them was, I want something. Not, would you help me with something? I'm not talking about church members. I'm talking about people in the community. You get those phone calls, don't you? Right? Now, I get them a, a lot because of a pastor of a church and things. And I understand that. They call a church phone, and I carry a church phone in my pocket, and therefore, I get the phone calls. I get that. But it's like, yeah, I'm not answering that. It's not that I'm being unkind. It's just like, they've not been faithful. They don't get my time and my resources unless they're faithful. Oh, on occasion, I don't, it's not every time, but, I, but about every 15th call, hey, what's going on? How are you? Well, I just want to let you know I moved again. And here's my new address. Basically, they're telling you, I need rent money, I need electric money, I need grocery money, I need, and here's my new address when you want to drop it off, you know. Well, thanks for letting me know that. Let me know if you ever need a ride to church. We'd love to come pick you up. Click. I'm not being nasty. And I'm not being cold. It's like, <sighs> but I love it when the faithful call. I love it when the faithful call. Time of day has no effect. What the conversation on, even if it's on the other end. Preacher, I really need some help. That doesn't bother me one bit because they're faithful. You see the difference? This is what Paul says. What we do, we, we, we pick out the parts that say, of the body of Christ and the people, and, and we say, boy, I bet they put a lot on missions. Or look what they're driving. Or, or look what they're wearing. And, 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 and we, we kind of, and the Bible says this, we think that they have no need, and we don't even pray for that because we think that they're... He says, you know what God says? God says, God giveth more honor to the ones that we, don't even, that we don't even take note of. The faithful. The ones that, that seem to be there, but they're not flashy. The ones that just want to hide behind the cross, not stand in front and get the, get the attention. The ones that just kind of want to be the helper, make the phone calls, you know, do the driving, do the whatever. God says God giveth more honor. The Bible says God giveth more honor to them. Can I say to you tonight, and, and I... I'm going to say this as honestly and gently as I know how to say it. I'm privileged, and I mean that. My wife will tell you, I've said this before, I'm privileged to get to pastor a church that I think the majority of this church is that crowd that God giveth more honor to. Can I just close with this? And I know I've said it like, what, five times now? Look, sitting right there on the back in a, in a light green blouse and jacket. When Miss Marlene's husband died, the house was not in her name. Now, I'm just giving you some private information, but it's all, it's all water under the bridge. Now, she don't mind. What house was in her name? He had made a decision years ago to do a reverse mortgage on the home in his name because she wasn't old enough to be on a reverse mortgage yet, so he just eliminated her. So when, when he died, she was, like, going to be homeless. They gave her, like, 60 days to evacuate the property. Now, catch this real quickly. So God allowed her to sell the house, and I say that because it was a time when the market wasn't great. God allowed her to sell the house and, and even put a little bit of money in her pocket that she didn't know she was going to have, and she was able to purchase and buy a place outright. No monthly payment other than her lot rent. When her, when her husband died, her family, I know a bunch of the family, you met Pam and Emil here just a few weeks ago, but, but I know a bunch of the family and met them over time, and, and they... And they and said, well, we don't know what we're going to do with mom. We're, you know, and I said, and it literally, this is exactly what I told the family. I don't, I don't think Marlene even knows this. But it's exactly what I told the, every one of the kids that, that I talked to. I said, Marlene needs to stay in this town. Well, she don't have a license. She can't drive. I said, that's why she needs to stay in this town. This is exactly what I told the family, the kids. 
I said, our church family will care for her more than anyone else that she knows. Hey, catch this. Catch this for a moment. I get the privilege of pastoring that girl. I don't say that lightly. It's not just Marlene, I'm using her as an example, but there's others. You understand what I'm talking about. Many people have said to me, Pastor, we're so thankful God brought you here to start the church. Listen, my wife and I have said this before, I'll say it again. If you feel that way, then praise be to God and you honor Him the way He leads you to be honoring Him. But for us, it's like God started this church because He was going to move our family to Arizona and He knew our family needed a church to go to. See, it's, it's, it's everybody else says, well, we're so God brought you here to start the church, Pastor. We, we, listen, that's wonderful because God provi- provided the church for your family, but let me remind you, He provided it for our family too. He provided it for our family just as much as He did for your family. And this is a church family that we get to be privileged to be part of. Hey, let me say this. Not every church family has that. They can be much larger. They can be much, much more well-off financially. They can have all the bells and whistles. And all, but listen, they don't care for the hidden needs. They don't care for the secret things of life. But I say to you tonight, Let's be careful that we don't allow the devil to start moving in our mind and start shifting some things around where we think that this person or that person or that ability or that teacher or that whatever is more honorable, more noble, more... Wait a minute, God says, the Word of God says He giveth more honor to the ones that we think and that we perceive to be less important and more feeble. The faithful. I just want to encourage you. Be faithful to the things of God. Be faithful to things of God. Listen, you cannot, you'll never watch a movie or read a script that'll even come close to comparing when you look back on your life and you see what God did for you. You'll never watch a movie that'll be put together to portray such supernatural things as you see what God did for you and your family when you walk forward by faith and look back and see what God had done through faith, and through faithfulness to the things of God. Lord, we come tonight, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. And Lord, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege